Greetings, my fellow freedom lovers and sovereign thinkers. This is LL3's newest podcast. My name is Craig, transmitting from the beautiful, swampy mangrove of South Florida. And today's date, Monday, December 12th, 2015. Just to give everyone a reminder, the Bill of Rights Day is tomorrow on December 15th. When the final, when the state of Virginia finally ratified it. So, um, I'll see what happens. I may do a show tomorrow. I'll just have to wing it. But, um, definitely check it out. So, celebrate it. And remember, it always stands for Government Keep Out. However, I'm going to be mainly doing, be pretty short, mostly international related. I'm not going to get too stretch it, you know, be like four topics and, um, and a viewpoint as well. And we'll just start off right with the whole thing on ISIL, ISIS, etc. The whole song and dance of what's going on with them. And of course, many people believe they're Muslims. You know, you know how that goes. The whole Muslim phobia, like Christian phobia and satanic phobia, etc. The whole, like the boogeyman syndrome. So on that, I'm be doing a couple of articles from um, New Eastern Outlook, which is uh, good stuff. You know, they, you know, got some land destroyed and all that. And this is one here. It came from Vladimir Platov. It goes here: ISIL, ugly Washington's child. And this is as it reads here: considerable amount of evidence in support not only of close ties of the close ties with ISIL and the involvement of the White House in the emergence of this terrorist radical formation, but also the U.S. participation in the preparation of its militants and supplying them with weapons has been already published in various countries. It is enough to at least recall an interview of a famous American essayist, philosopher, and theorist Noam Chomsky, Noam Chomsky made for Al Abram Egyptian Publishing House in November 2014, saying that the success of the terrorist group ISIL is tribute to the U.S. policy in Saudi Arabia. He stressed at the time that Barack Obama had directly authorized ISIL weapons equipping through the Gulf states, particularly through Qatar, and now threatened the Arab countries with those things in the, which creation they had participated in recent years, he stated. If Washington was sincere in the struggle against ISIL, it had to contend with Saudi Arabia as the cradle of Wahhabism and extremism, as well as a financial backer of the terrorist group in the West, East, and Southeast Asia. One cannot also forget the declaration of Iranian leaders in March of this year on the arrest of three American military advisors during the Operation Scorpion Sting, who aided ISIL to carry out specific operations in Iraq. However, apart from these evidence, evidence, some others were published as well, confirming the involvement of U.S. intelligence in the armed militants of ISIL, with the use of military transport aircraft from Jordan, Saudi Arabia, and Qatar, having performed around 200 flights with landings at international airports of Turkey and Jordan, including the Essen Boga Airport near Ankara. Reports on landing of military cargo in regions controlled by ISIL militants were confirmed by Iranian scout sources, including those fighting against ISIL in the province of Shalad Aldin or Yathrib and Balad districts. Similar facts were also registered in October 2014, not far from the Syrian city of Kobin. And in the November in November, the Iraqi intelligence service released an official statement in which they confirmed that there was the aid given to ISIL terrorists in the fight against Iranian army and security forces in the form of dropping ammunition and weapons from the U.S. warplanes. In June 2014, Aaron Klein, in an article for Warnet Daily, stated that ISIL members had a training in Jordan in 2012 under the supervision of American instructors, instructors whose actions were strictly confidential. Officials of the U.S. military so far refused to recognize their supporting an army terrorist, although General Martin Dempsey admitted in his speech before the Senate Committee on Armed Services that their Arab allies in the Middle East funded activities of the Islamic State. Another high-ranking military officer, Thomas McInery, Inery, Right, Internet, excuse me, in September told Fox News that influential U.S. forces initially bet 
on ISIL militants among the warring parties in Syria, which resulted in arms provided to a group of people attacking the consulate in Benghazi in Libya, September of 2012. In, the re in response to this evidence, the U.S. officials persistently continued to assert that their country is arming peaceful mercenaries in Syria in order to fight against ISIL and the government of Assad in Damascus by their own hands, although it is clear that these forces are no longer an active participant in the theater of military. Operations have been replaced by dangerous radical groups. However, in all spite of these attempts from the White House to avoid acknowledging their involvement in, their, in the establishment and operations of the Islamic State, the other day, as a result of a publication of declassified documents of the U.S. State Department and Department of Defense made by Judicial Watch, a conservative organization supervised by the U.S. government, the documentary evidence, evidence was presented again that the security services in the U.S. administration, yet in 2012, deliberately went to support ISIL, hoping to use this organization in the fight against legitimate authorities of Syria and other political adventures of the White House. Just to let you know, there is a link for that too, so definitely check it out. Judicial Watch is one fantastic organization. And I uh, will keep on going here. A report growing threat of the Islamic State prepared on August 5th, 2012, clearly stated a warning that this formation would, be would have disastrous consequences for the situation in Iraq and will give huge advantages of ISIL, which arose on the basis of Al Qaeda in Iraq. Can we see a blowback? This creates ideal conditions for the return of Al Qaeda to Iraq, to their former pockets of resistance located in Mosul and Ramadi. The document says the further it further points out that ISIL, that the ISIL can announce the Islamic State after entering into alliance with other terrorist organizations in Iraq and Syria, which would create a serious danger for unifying Iraq and its defending territories. Stated, the report of Defense Intelligence Agency, DIA, originally classified as secret and no form, and dated August 12, 2012, was sent, by, to, sent to many U.S. government agencies, including CENTOM, CIA, FBI, DHS, NGA, the, United, the, US, the U.S. Department, and many others. From these documents, it files that in 2012, the U.S. intelligence clearly understands that growing threat to peace from ISIL. However, the U.S. administration decided to use this terrorist organization in solving their regional problems in the Middle East, including the weakening of the Muslim regimes in Syria, Iraq, Iran, and several other countries. The documents of the U.S. government agencies published by Digital Watch visually confirm that the Al-Nusra army process was directly coordinated by the U.S. intelligence. Al-Nusra was joined ISIL and other jihad groups, American ar Amer groups, America arms delivered to Syria, including anti-tank missiles, was made available to ISIL, al Nusra's militants back in 2012, including through direct weapon to su supply to ISIL from Washington's allies, Turkey and Saudi Arabia, support from Washington, D.C. for the Saudi, Saudi project to create an Islamic state was acknowledged by Robert Ford, a former U.S. ambassador to Syria, in his recent interview for Foreign Policy Journal, he pointed out that the U.S. protection of this terrorist group with the help of former officers in Ba'athist Army was a huge mistake. Overall, the introduction of the documents published by Digital Watch creates the impression of a very strange coincidence of the tactics on the participating the U.S. and Western countries in dealing with ISIL and Nazi Germany in the years 1938-1940. One can trace a similar scheme using enemy militant forces to fraternize with them a large destabilization of the region and to assure their own interests. In this case, the preference is given to, to solution of extremely difficult and sensitive task, task by proxy, secretly flashing most reactionary players on the world stage while catastrophic failure myopia will not be sobering including the west so the whole thing is the military industrial complex is benefiting this the most 
And when you when when you see here about these big mistakes and failures, it's considered more like blowback. That's a CIA term. Like I said before, ISIL, ISIS, whatever you want to call it, are New World Order funded. Regardless of the Saudi Arabia, United States, Turkey, etc., don't matter, or across the board, they're all in this, under the same umbrella. And many people talk about the pipeline. Okay, well, just well, just pretty uh, legit. It's totally dead wrong. That's why the United States has to stop being an empire. But when you have being chartered by something higher up, which are known as the oligarchs, we don't know who exactly who they are. Some people have some names and theories, but we don't know for sure. This is very dangerous because the innocent people, good folks, doesn't matter where they're at, will suffer dearly. That's why I always say, support the Republic, my friends, not an empire. So the next one here is come, come, came from the same article, you know, um, New Eastern Outlook. And this is written by William Engdahl. It's entitled, China Carefully Moving to Displace Dollar. And this is interesting on here, too. It says here, while Washington seems obsessed with trying to humiliate China's President Xi Jinping, and make him his make him lose face, sending warships into Chinese Chinese territorial waters in South China Sea, just days after Obama's White House meeting with uh, President Z and other proactive acts, Britain's government is taking advantage of growing cleft between Washington and Beijing. They are cleverly moving to develop a prominent role, is what they had they as emergence of the Chinese currency, and Renminbi which is RMB as a major global reserve currency. China is for its parts is taking cautious but firm steps to create that esteemed status for the ren ooh ren renimbi renminbi something which could prepare the way for an exit of China and others from the dollar and from holding US treasury debt. Z made a major visit to London at the end of October to meet not only Prime Minister Cameron, but also Britain's Queen. After this talk, Cameron, the Chinese president, proclaimed that China and Britain will build a global com comprehensive strategic partnership in the 21st century. From Britain's side, it is a shrewd move by the financial institutions of the city of London to tie their financial future firmly with that of China as the Chinese, Chinese dragon moves to make the Renminbi, one of the world's major trade and reserve currencies, is also for bad news for dollar, dollar stakeholders, as clearly Beijing will have little interest in supporting the debt-bloated dollar system in coming years. The joint statement issued after the London talks by the UK and the Chinese government declared, the UK supports the inclusion of the RMB into the SDR basket subject to meet to meeting existing criteria in the IMS upcoming SDR review. Both sides urge members who have yet to ratify the 2010 quota and governance reform to do so without delays to further enhance the voice of emerging markets and developing countries. The last is a direct dig at Washington and the U.S. Senate, which is blocking approval of the IMF voting reforms. The joint statements continue. China ch commends the UK for being the first major Western country to become a prospective founding member of the Asian Infrastructure Investment Bank. They look forward to the AIIB's early operation and, integ and integration into the global financial system, lean, clean, and green institution that addresses Asia's infrastructure needs. As the devastation of the Second World War, the city of London was forced to cede the lead role as the World Financial Center to New York and the dollar system. Power passed from the formal British Empire to the formal American Empire. Wall Street replaced the city of London after the 1944 Britain, Bretton Woods talks. Times have changed. Today, the city of London has become the world's leading financial center and the place where more currency trade is done than even New York. It has already entered into a bilateral agreement with the People's Bank of China to trade in Renminbi and is the third largest RMB center in the world. The question is whether Britain or as Charles de Gaulle termed her perfidious Albion 
is positioning herself as a Trojan horse for Washington, insinuating herself deep into an evolving Chinese grand design. It is the Trojan horse preparing to ride away from her transatlantic partner in the United States, galloping her to East? China's SIP's grand design. What's becoming clearer, even to those in Washington's Treasury Department, is that China has its long-term strategy. Her grand design is called for fully independent of the U.S. dollar as a reserve currency that can be used to wage currency wars against a recalcitrant, recalcitrant. Some words I'm learning today, folks. Sorry about that. China. Today, China is the largest foreign holder of U.S. government debt. An Achilles heel in a situation of U.S. financial sanctions or asset freeze could be devastating to Beijing. A giant step in making not only China, but also Russia and other nations less vulnerable to the U.S. Treasury's financial terrorism department actions came this October when Beijing began its own swift inner, inner bank clean, clearing system. During the recent U.S. sanctions against Iran, Washington successfully armed twisted the private Bel Belgium-based SWIFT inner, inner bank system to freeze Iran from any international bank transfers, de facto strangling the Iranian economy, making export oil nearly impossible. In 2014, when Washington imposed numerous sanctions against Russia, she tried to pressure SWIFT, a private system of some 200 major international banks to block Russia as well from using SWIFT, something Russia declared would be an act of warfare. In event, at least at that time, SWIFT members refused to impose a ban on SWIFT payment networks. Foolishly, Britain's Cameron and Russophobe Polish governments joined Washington in August 2014 in trying to get SWIFT to freeze Russian banks out. In response, Vlad President Vladimir Putin order creation of a Russian inner, inner bank clearing system internal to Russia and as is today operational. China filed with establishment of plans for their own Chinese inner bank clearing system that would go international including with Russian banks a severe blow to the politicized swift of the Western banks. Now China has opened operations on its limited basis of its alternative to swift. It calls a SIP or Chinese international payment system payment system it used the same coding system as other international payment systems, making transactions more fluid and rapid. It is a super network that will replace existing multiple clearinghouses that process yawn payments and will rival Visa and MasterCard. SIPs or CIPS will be a major support of the internationalization of the RMB and actually more significant in many respects for China's international financial security against U.S. financial attacks, then China's efforts, effort to win acceptance by the International Monetary Fund as one of the special drawing RIOITs, or SDR, currencies used in the IMF currency basket alongside the dollar, yen, pound, and euro today. China's National Bank has quietly been laying the infrastructure for this for some, this, for this, for some time. Already the RMB is the world's fourth most traded currency surpassing the Japanese yen before launch of SISP or yeah SIPS wait yeah that's how you do it okay however using RMB in cross border financial dealings was time consuming and costly with only offshore clearing banks in Hong Kong Singapore or London able to do the transactions with SISP would be dramatically faster and cheaper SWIFT will be the loser, as will Washington and their foolish financial warfare sanctions. SWIFT will also facilitate financial coordination between China and her BRICS partner countries, especially Russia. The Russian Finance Ministry announced on November 6th that the Russian government will issue state bonds in 2016 to end at a yet underdetermined, undetermined amount in RMB in bids outflank U.S. sanctions and effectively draw closer to her strategic partner, China. The Washington U.S. Treasury Financial Terrorism Unit's sanctions imposed on Russia in 2014 target its large state-owned banks, Silver Bank, VTB, Venice Kanama Bank, Gazprom Bank, and Rossello Kaza Bank.
Cosmic or Russian Agriculture Bank were cut off from long-term over 30-day Western financing. China could offset that now. The whole thing is, it's more, it's more like they're going to it looks like they're going to try to focus more on the main currency with them, and it's all part of the same debacle with the Bank of England and so forth. Well, I'm going to continue on here. Beijing's financial liberalization. Liberalization. Another struggle move that stands to protect China from the financial speculative attacks that devastated the Asian t tiger economies in 1997-1998 is a decision by the Chinese leadership to put major financial market liberalization reforms on ice at least until 2020. Washington has openly pushed the reforms to get capital controls lifted, allow the free flow in and out of China of capital. This June, the stock markets in Shanghai and Shenzhen markets began to collapse as a feverish bubble has been encouraged by the Chinese government in vain hopes of sucking needed capital into debt-ridden state-owned enterprises burst. An estimate $2 trillion on paper stock valuations vanished into thin air in four weeks, along with savings of some 90 million Chinese citizens who bought on to dreams of get rich. What emerged from the experience was that the government and the financial regulators had imitated the stock market models of Wall Street, but without understanding how risky those were techniques, such as allowing investors to buy stocks on margin or broker borrowed funds. On November 6th, the Chinese government announced that initial plans to free flow of capital in and out of China plan for implementation before the year end has been postponed until the end of 2020. It is a major step in stabilizing the tumult on the stock and other Chinese markets. It also insulates China from the kind of hedge fund speculation that destroyed economic growth in Thailand, Malaysia, and South Korea in 1997, when George Soros led a gang of hedge funds to target their financial markets, and is vainly trying today with, with China. The U.S. Treasury in the mid-1990s have convinced the Asian tiger economies to reform and liberalize their financial markets, leaving them vulnerable to the attacks. There reportedly was a heated internal de debate in a closed door September 22nd meeting chaired by President Xi and I mean, between the Chinese Financial Finance Ministry and the Development National Development and Reform Commission, the state planning agency responsible for infrastructure and other construction projects. Finance ministry officials argue for more financial liberalization, as did U.S. Treasury Secretary Jacob Lowe in the ill-conceived belief Chinese savers could earn more investing in foreign stocks or bonds than in China and use their wealth effects from foreign investments to buy more. Chinese Huawei smartphones or laptops to boost domestic growth. Any series Western fund manager holding stocks or bonds in EU or U.S. markets these days has sleepless nights holding the breath, fearing the collapse of a central bank-induced stock market, stock and bond market bubbles that resulted from years now of the various quantitative easing zero interest rate policies pursued, pursued by the Federal Reserve and European central banks since 2007 to 2008 U.S. financial crisis. In retrospect, Chinese leaders might realize that their experience with the U.S.-style stock market bubble and crash forced focused attention on the far more economically important moves to construct the One Belt, One World Rail infrastructure network across Eurasia. Japan experienced the devastating destruction of the Japanese post-war MIDI economic model after the Plaza Accord of September 1985, when Washington Treasury Secretary James Baker III pressured Japan to appreciate the yen and take other measures that create the world's most inflated stock and real estate markets. That bubble burst in 1990, and Japan is struggling with chronic deflation and is yet to recover. The world, who does not need a new version of Wall Street model with Chinese characteristics, the world needs solid investment and need it, in needed infrastructure across vast expanses of Eurasia into the Middle East and Africa. It seems that the, Ch seems the Chinese leadership is learning that painful lesson. Fortunately, the One Belt, One Road project of Xi Jinping had already been designated in I mean, a 
national strategic priority. So it's going to be interesting right now, like the world, like the world leaders, the world, the International Monetary Fund wants to go ahead, wants to do work with China, including England. So you, 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 so expect like the Bank of England going to get involved as usual, you know, control the world one way or the other and make them feel the Chinese government feel comfortable. It's going to be a cloak and, da and dagger um, financial on a financial perspective and the people that's holding the dollar that's this fiat a lot of the, a lot of the money's out there right now is fiat means in Latin how long can it last no commodity backing whatsoever so definitely folks you got to start investing in metals that'd be your best bet and be prepare yourself to be self-contained I'll tell you one thing if this goes Lord willing you're going to see a lot of people cutting the risk, going to shooting spree, and maybe jumping off a building. Not the United States, but the world. Hopefully they won't go that far. But you got to prepare yourselves in these areas. Because that's what the One World Order wants. They want to try to use this nation, China, as their pet pee or be used. Another puppet, puppet establishment. But um, like I said, folks. Hope for the best. Prepare for the worst. All right. Next one here. Came from the Telegraph, which is based out of England. This is by Rory Mullahan. Came out yesterday, to be exact. 6.03 p.m. GMT time. It says here, 70 Paris airport workers have security passes revoked over extremism fears. Security agents have also examined... The contents around 4,000 workers' lockers at the Charles de Gaulle and Orly as the airport's authorities attempts to weed out potential terrorists working at the busy transport hubs. French security sources have said that Islamist militants killed in a police raid in Paris suburb five days after the November 13th attacks were planning to attack Charles de Gaulle, France's biggest international airport. The radicalization of airport personnel sparked concern after the crash in October of Russian passenger plane in Egypt, which Western intelligence officials believe was brought by a bomb smuggled on board by an airport worker. Augustin de Romanet, chief as officer of the ADP, the company that runs the, the two Paris airports, said the state authority, which issues security passes, has carried out a screening after the attacks on Paris in which 130 people were killed and 350 injured. I do say that's still a New World Order plot. Nearly 70 red badges were withdrawn after the attacks, mainly for cases of radicalization, he said in an interview with the French with French media. He said around 85,000 people had security zone clearance in two airports, most of them working for airlines, on for several hundred subcontractors. So-called red badges are issued to people employed in security zone. Razi Charles de Gaulle in Orly Airport working for instance as badger handler, baggage handlers, aircraft cleaners, and suppliers. To be issued with the red badge, you have to be cleared by police. And if you work for a company that carries out security checks of in-flight luggage, you need three police checks. The Ramanet said some airport workers suspected of links to radical Islam were placed under house arrest under a state of emergency powers implemented after the attacks a month ago. It emerged that the November 13th massacre that dozens of airport staff had their security pass revoked after the terror attacks on Charles Hebdo magazine in Paris in January, but others continued to work despite an intelligence watch list as a potential Islamist extremist. Well, I gotta tell you this, on my past episodes, Past archives, I, I did the article, the address the article by New American uh, about on the Charles Hebdo magazine, in which they said in past history the French government were gunning for them. So look at my friends. There's also concern about radical radicalism among bus, metro, and rail employees in the Paris region. Sammy Moore, one of the attackers who blew himself up in the Bataclan Rock venue in Paris, had work as a bus driver despite being on an intelligence watch list. Well, 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 well. Yeah, the sleepers, the alleged sleeper cells move on. Don't get me wrong, they do exist. I'm not gonna, I'm not going to, uh, um, 
say it doesn't because that would be naive. So it looks like right now the French government is on a, of course, France is still in a lockdown, if I'm correct. And a lot of these folks here claim to be Muslims by faith or Middle Eastern descent. How far can this go? What people really think about this. The people in France have to remain vigilant. After they go after the ones that are Middle Eastern descent or Islamic by faith, can you, are you next? Are people from North Africans are next? It can go on. That's what the war on terror is about, which is a conflict with ourselves. You always got to question these, my friends. Got to really be very, have that inquiry mind. This is why what happened in France, call it the, the nation of privileges that I respect. They don't want, they don't believe in the right for self-defense. They want the government to leave, leave all their, they want them to have, they want the French people to leave all their security eggs in the hands of the government. That's a mistake. So you got to really look at everything across the board. This is why observe responsibly has always been my, uh, that's always been my motto. Because you have to actually Examine things thoroughly before they said uh, throw it in your face and you become like Pablo's dogs and respond. Let's just see how far this goes, my friend. And remember, think about the French people. They're involved. They are victims of the New World Order, as far as I'm concerned. Alright, finally, this came from The Guardian. It came out today. Yeah, it came out today by Dave Schilling. Look more of a commentary here. It says, has politically correct culture gone too far? It says, reads here, as it reads, getting a little tongue-tied. Today I woke up in the startling realization that I'm no longer a child. In the eyes of the law, I have been a kid since I turned 18. In the eyes of the Lord, oh, eyes of the Lord, eyes of the law, <laughs> I've been a kid since I turned 18. In the eyes of the Lord, I grew up the first time saw the interrogation of the scene in Basic Instinct. And I didn't really care for that movie, but I will continue. This year, it dawned on me that the truest, most accurate sign of maturity is actually righteous indignation. I lost it over reports that students at Princeton are lobbying to have former U.S. President Woodrow Wilson's name removed from the University School of Public and National Affairs. Woodrow Wilson led us through the First World War. He invented the League of Nations, a forward-thinking precursor to the UN. He had to live in his entire life with the name Woodrow. He hasn't suffered enough, I thought. Wilson, for the record, oversaw the resegregation of parts of the federal government during his tenure, a blemish of his liberal record that shares with basically every president through the middle of the last century. While we're all at we're at it, shall we replace the Washington Monument with a Whole Foods? <laughs> I like that. When it comes to the generational divide in this country, I am officially part of the problem. While the young people annoyingly persist in believing we can always do better, I couldn't be bothered to get up and change the channel on my TV if an ISIS execution video came on MSNBC because, ah, the remote is so far away. I just got to get, got up to refill my water 10 minutes ago. Our world is such a nonstop horror show of violence, greed, and NCSI spinoffs after the aforementioned hypothetically grisly scenario isn't quite that far-fetched. All the while, Starface comes here and critics delight in ridiculing kids who've had enough. Perhaps college students are creating safe space safe spaces on their campuses because their country there inherently fundamentally isn't. Perhaps college students are creating safe place spaces of the, on their campuses because the country they're inheriting isn't. In 2015, it has seemed like every day some new Gen X celebra celebrity from the 1980s or 90s popped up to bemoan the sensitive, goalless, weak will Generation Y while the baby boomers guzzled their food through a straw and masturbate 
all over their guns. <laughs> I gotta laugh too, don't get me wrong. Author Brett Easton Ellis dubbed people around my edge Generation Wuss. To Ellis, millennials are defined by other by their over by over their by their oversensitivity, their assistance, that they are right despite overwhelming proof that suggests they are not their lack of placing things within context, the overreacting, the passive aggressive positivity, and of course all of the exaggerated by the by the meds. They've been fed since childhood by overprotective helicopter parents mapping with their every move. Oversensitivity seems like this way of describing anyone who finds his attitudes towards women distressing. Comedian brand ambassador for nostalgia, nostalgia. Jerry Seinfeld views the performacologist because they are too PC to laugh at his edgy jokes and sneakers, breakfast cereals, and airline foods. These cultural warriors often see oversensitivity as a threat to America's precious notion of freedom of speech, one of the most abused, misunderstood ideas we have. And they have a little, little, you know, a little count here. Interesting. The San Bernardino, San Bernardino shooting is part of a pattern that has no parallel anywhere else in the world, Obama says. The data reveals even more shocking human toil. Human toll. All, all year, we've been subject to the borderline hate and unfettered lunacy of Donald Trump, Ben Carson, Ted Cruz, and the rest of the Republican presidential field. Carson has gone on record saying Islam is not compatible with the U.S. Constitution, even though the Constitution explicitly gives American citizens the right to practice Islam freely. Meanwhile, Donald Trump wants to ban Islam from entering the U.S. altogether because people like Carson and Trump are old and wealthy and running for president. Society values their speech more than kids demanding trigger warnings before a lecture or who wants to know platform and intellectual. Really? This should be a trigger warning for the next GOP debate? Because watching them makes me want to shoot myself? In the last two weeks, Trump has mocked journalists with a disability and said that Black Lives Matter protests maybe should have been roughed up. After the assault took place at one of his rallies in our blinkered view of free speech, Trump has earned the right to rubber stamp violence and intolerance, presumably because he's a tough guy who speaks plain truth or such some bull or some such some such bullshit. Trump's favorite weapon, the rhetorical equivalent of the golden gun from the James Bond video game Gold 964 because it has the power to vanquish an opponent immediately. Is calling someone stupid or a loser even if Trump's statements are apparent to both sides of the political American political establishment. We have to listen to him, but he doesn't have to listen to us. In the idea version of American First First Amendment free speech, everyone speaks eloquently. No one uses their rights to incite violence or hatred. And we patiently listen to everyone else's opinions because they're all so demand, damned reasonable. Of course, this notion is no so fantastical and absurd. There should be a special section at Disneyland called First Amendment Land, where instead Mickey Mouse and Darth Vader posing for photos with your babies. It's Alexis de Tequilavi. The practical reality of American society is that most of us would rather not hear what the other side has to say and would quite frankly chew off their own genitals in exchange for power. To pretend like those people doesn't exist at all. It is why any hope for meaningful compromise on wedge issues has died since the early days of the Obama administration. The power of Trump is that he can magically quiet that the, those he does not agree with through the power of insults. That's the greatest gift a politician could hope for in a democracy that doesn't value differences of opinions. How is Trump's dismissal of opposing views any different than the no-platforming no of feminists who critique trans activists? Both cases, someone is dismissing speech they deemed harmful, dangerous to society, or just plain incorrect. <gasps> you said those words. That's offensive. Oh my goodness. How dare you? 
you hurt my feelings, I have to get the law. Gotta legislate law on this now. Exactly. The only difference is that Trump's ideas are now terrifying, considered acceptable enough that he can find himself on Saturday Night Live. The average left-wing youth activist hasn't had a national platform since Occupy Wall Street. A movement cheerfully discredited by the media and shut down by the police. No platform and PC attitudes are themselves speech that has to be protected as long as the other side shows, shows such contempt for ideas of equality and empathy. The true American speech is less a thoughtful dialogue and more epic slap fight between two combatants exhibiting the signs of chronic alcohol abuse. Our discourse is not civilized, is not reasonable, and has only gotten more debased in the 19, in the 30 years, in the 30 years I've been on this planet. Young activists actually still give a damn about the future, which is why they're using every tool at their disposal to improve their lot, rather than giggling every time the man with the silly haircut makes makes a funny on the TV box. As a nation, we are so cynical that we've allowed a cartoon testicle with a mouth and absolutely zero experience in government to have a sniff of getting into the White House. Gen X thinkers are bemused by the people they are so diversely named millennials or should be or should that be founders because they are compelled to try to be a bit more enlightened than those that came before them. One of the millennials favorite tools for enacting social ch- social change is Twitter, but there are there are, but there are those who see Twitter as yet another hotbed of censorship. In the New York's magazine, in New York's magazine, New York magazine's piece of PC culture from 20, January 2015, writer Jonathan Ch- Chait claims that that the emphasis on tone, policing, and other attempts to tackle the biases inherited in certain forms of rhetoric is harming the right our right to free speech. Social media where swarms of jeering critics can materialize in an instant paradoxically creates this feeling of isolation, he wrote. The jeering critic he's also talking about is the rebel ra- rabble rouser on Twitter blowing up me- blowing up the mentions of someone when they deem problematic. In this particular fa- fantasy, the thought police mobilizes silence anyone who dares defy what they believe is acceptable. The nameless horde of youngsters who take social media in order to explain the plight of trans community, those misgendering Caitlyn Jenner, or demand empathy be shown to my... (coughs) Sorry about that, my friends. Caitlyn Jenner, or demand empathy be shown to minorities, are apparently terrifying certain people into silence who you know have a point too. Gosh darn it. I tried to check ch- its assertion. Twitter mentions can be ignored. No one is required to have a social media presence in the concept of isolation on the internet means your schedule is now free to get that gym membership. Visit a foreign country. Finish that screenplay about a hyper intelligent species of space elves or make actual friends. The internet is a is a choose your own adventure of hateful aggressive speech on all sides of the political spectrum but no matter who you are from nobody calling out an athlete to an intellectual debating the merits of second wave feminism to an audience of 30 white wine drunks adjunct faculty they're always the off switch in the corner of your computer or smartphone you're right when, when this alleged censorship migrates into the physical realm, it becomes a bit trickier. It manifests itself in the real world through the manufactured structure of the American higher education system. Students at the University of Missouri recently began expressing their desire for safe spaces on campus in the wake of controversies over racism at the school. Student protesters turned a patch of lawn into a sanctuary free of dissenting opinions and journalists. Yes, I remember reading about that. The protesters are caught in video pushing a photographer for ESPN out of their area, which naturally sent vomitous outrage machines like New York Post into fits of hysterics. Considering critics of young people are even more vitriolic in their hatred of PC culture than their liberal counterparts. 
I honestly think they believe that this is a harbinger of the end times, far more disastrous for the planet than global warming. The rise of militant groups in the Middle East, or the next Coldplay album, an outline po online post by the president of the Evangelical College, Oklahoma, Wesleyan Dr. Everett Piper, made rounds of concern media agitators, ag ag aggregators, excuse me, across the country this month. Piper says an altar is supposed to make you feel bad. It's supposed to make you feel guilty. In response to a student who was troubled by a church sermon, he also helpfully reminds readers that his school is not a daycare. He He's right about that. The average daycare doesn't cost almost $32,000 a year to attend, whereas Oklahoma Raisin does, in fact, cost that much. Granted, OWU... OWU offers rooms, board, and eternal salvation. While in daycare, all, all you get is a juice box, a blanket, and a DVD screening of the middle 35 minutes of Finding Nemo before your stepdad comes to pick you up. Piper goes on to say, if you want to enable rather than confront it, there are many universities across the land in Missouri and elsewhere that will give you exactly what you want. But the Oklahoma Raisin isn't one of them. In other words, if you want to spend $32,000 a year to develop an inferiority complex, then you know where to matriculate. Bartsville, Oklahoma, finest and presumably only private Christian university. Piper's post equates not wanting to be made feel bad with selfishness, campus safe space with narcissistic playgrounds of the weak willed and cowardly. This worldview seems to value. Stoic cynicism, cynicism and self-hatred over not wanting to hit yourself over the head with the hammer until God, your mom, and Ronald Reagan's boldly ghost love you more. I'm just old enough to see how that could be appealing. Speaking up takes efforts and always being satisfied with myself would get old after a while without extreme disgust would life be as sweet even if i didn't struggle with doubt every once in a while i'd be donald trump who by the way is a product of america's reigning reigning generational champions and baby boomers our boomer overlords have handed us a world where i don't even trust the guy in the front of me in a line of panera bread at Panera Bread. <sighs> While Gen X and Y fight over the deep alphabet letter is more extreme, baby boomers like Trump and Dr. Everett Piper are steering the USS Uncle Sammy blue jeans in the cultural equivalent of the asteroid field from the Empire Strikes Back. I hadn't had the opportunity to blissfully forget the Planned Parenthood mass shootings when the San Bernardino mass shootings happened. Our boomer overlords with their tough love, quiet strength, and verbal abuse have handed us a world where I don't even trust the guy in front of me in line at Panera Bread to be not not to be planning to upload a clip onto my chest while Trump is gaslighting his critics and encouraging his supporters to rough up the centers. Real change on important issues like gun control elude us. Movie theaters, clinics, universities, high schools, and countless other spaces too numerous mentions have been targets of indiscriminate violence. College is the last is the last time where one is free to be idealistic, to think they can actually make a difference before men of God, politicians, and the mega rich inform them that actually they're better off playing along. I might question the necessity of changing the name of a school or think that people need to stop assuming an off color joke is the end of the world but my time is up i'm too busy ignoring bill collectors getting winded going up a staircase and freak it out over a suspicious mole to worry that much next generation still thinks they can change the world for the better and maybe they can if we just let them the only thing i know for sure is that they can't do much worse than our parents yep like i like I always say more things change more stay the same all this political correctness, as far as I'm concerned, is the attributes of taking a dump in the crapper. Hey, I'm pro free speech, and I'm very damn proud of it. I don't have, I, I, hey, I can disagree with folks, but you know what? 
they have that right to speak their minds, they have, their rights are natural born. And this is why when I when I hear when I see all this garbage, they want to oh, all these think words offend me. We gotta dilute that. We gotta take. We gotta stop using the word bossy. You know what I say? The hell with your dumbed down agenda. Because as far as I'm concerned, it will inspire me to enhance myself, and everyone else needs to do the same. Don't be like that person. Be yourself. Be creative. Speak your views. Have merit. That would be the best bet. And, of course, everyone talking about Woodrow Wilson. Oh, he's, he was a racist, you know? So what's going to be next? We'll take down the Lincoln Memorial. Well, he was a racist, too. He believed he supported his first inaugural speech and was supporting, still support slavery. You can look it up, and you can go to my past episodes. I did talk about that, about Abe Lincoln. So this is really, that's why I always laugh at these at some of these folks that want to complain and whine and, and have censorship in college, have these little zones. You know what? Give me a break. You're blowing smoke up your own butts. It's going to blow back in your face when you least expect it. And let's, let the new generation express themselves. Keep teaching natural born rights. Enlighten them. Share information. Plant those seeds. Don't change people. Inspire them on bettering themselves. Watch out for the mind control propaganda as well. That's another thing we always have to be vigilant towards. They want us to manipulate and sell us garbage and we go, okay, boss, we'll be the house and field peasants. I say not. Because if you if you keep this up and listen what the idiot box says or these bobbleheads, where they're politicians, corporate, corporate buffoons, and, and to go, we can't say this, can't say that, can't do this, can't do that. Thomas Paine will be rolling in his grave. He is right now, to be very sincere. And that is it. I can thank everyone for listening to this show. Plus, feel free to download and share this throughout your social media network. If you have any questions, comments, recommendations, love letters, hate letters, etc. Or you can send me something that's interesting or haven't really talked about yet I boldly recommend using your cars please use your correspondences with decor you can hit me on Facebook Twitter Google Plus iHeartRadio Spreaker World Truth and uh, Scene.Life I'm starting that out Scene.Life so it's going to take me time to get into the swing of things on that one or you can email me at LokiLuck3, the number three is LokiLuck3, all together, at gmail.com. Once again, thank you for your time. Plus, always remember that the Maniac Resistance is healthy for the soul and can liberate humanity. Until next time, take care of yourselves, keep on spreading the love, and may your guardian spirits be with you.